Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. We've got a project today that I've been wanting to make for a while. Um, the only thing is I needed to have a level lathe before I could make this of any use. Uh, what it is, is it's a uh, tailstock uh, alignment bar. I know you can buy them there, well, in Canada here, they're, you're looking about a hundred bucks for the, you know, the famous name brand one that everybody knows. But, uh, well, like I was saying before, if I can make something that'll work so I don't have to buy something, I will. So what I wound up doing was digging through the scrap pile, uh, found a few pieces I think would work, drew up a plan based around those pieces, and uh, started putting one together. So, hope you enjoy. So part of the reason why I needed a new drive dog for the lathe uh, is this next project. Now that I have the lathe uh, leveled and straight, and I know that there's no twist in the bed, um, I'd like to make sure that the tailstock is properly aligned with the headstock before I can really trust that I can cut some bit, uh, decent journals and uh, decent tapers and be reasonably accurate. I have a uh, piece of Dodge pickup truck center link and a couple of these slugs that came out of a scrap metal bin. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of material this is. Uh, it's got this oddly shaped hole going through the center, but it's three inches round. I realize that the commercial versions of these don't have necessarily this large of a journal on the end. Um, that's okay, because uh, what this gives me is it gives me lots of material, so if I ever have to re it, if it gets dropped or dinged or something like that, then I have lots of material to work with. I don't mind it being bigger or heavier than a commercial version. Um, I'm not trying to necessarily save on material costs, because I'm not making hundreds of these things. Man, that saw has been handy. Yep, that is some of the best money I've spent in here for tooling, was buying that bandsaw. I think that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get for a uh, rough and uh, out of concentric surface. <laughs> Alright, that's actually giving a nice surface finish, it just would be nice if it wasn't birds nesting. 900 thousandths, 986. And again, this part here isn't super critical. Alright, so 986, so we need 43 thousandths di er, on radius. How's that? 1.251, 252-ish, somewhere in the neighborhood, 248. Again, the you know dial calipers aren't really the most accurate to begin with, but... Center drill. Here we are, center drilled. That will work just nicely. Now to flip it around the other end and clean up the other end. There we go, center holes in both ends. Just so I don't scratch myself on it. Okay, next step is I need to set up between centers. Uh, I'm going to pause here and bring you back in at that point. I want to make things a little easier on myself, so rather than trying to size the bore here to the well to the shaft, um, I'd like to try sizing the shaft to the bores once these uh, two pieces are done. 
Uh, this is a piece of scrap, um, just like this one here, it's buddy. They are going to become the indicating rings on the ends of this bar. Uh, what I figure is, because my nominal size for the bar is 1 inch, uh, 125 thousandths, I want to cut these about a thousandth uh, smaller, so it'll be 1 inch, 124. Groovy, that'll work. One inch seven eighty five. Need one hundred eighty five thousands taken off. Ha! Huh, look at that. Okay, yeah. Once I got the parallel straight against the back of the piece, within a thousandth, and uh, that's that's actually not bad. I'll go with that. Kind of have to. It's to size now. I've also checked uh, that there's enough clearance to the uh, uh, to the chuck jaws to be able to make a one and an eighth hole through this. <clears throat> so now it just comes down time to boring. One inch, one twenty-three. I'm gonna call it there. So I have one that's uh, one thou over, one that's one thou under the uh, nominal, and that way uh, it makes it nice because this way I can size the shaft to each of the rings. So let's pop this out of here, get the shaft in here. So we have our piece of uh, bar set up between centers. The headstock on this unit is a Morse taper five, so I'm using a Morse taper five to Morse taper three adapter. Um, and a long reach Morse taper three dead or well drive center I guess in the center got our lathe dog on and What's nice is actually is as I tighten down and this ring moves uh, that way It helps to offset the weight of the uh, dog uh, dog leg there So it yeah now before I start getting flame mail about having the uh, a Live center in here instead of a dead center because I've been told dead centers are more accurate I'm only using this until I get the um, discs, or well, hubs, I guess, if you will, mounted on here. And then once I get those mounted on, then I'm going to do the final cutting on dead center. Well, I let the indicating rings cool off a little bit, and then I re-measured them before I started, before I start cutting the shaft. And they both shrank by a few thousands. So these are, these are the inside diameters of these uh, indicating rings. Not a big deal. I can adjust the size of the journal to suit. This is why I did the bores first. We're going to shoot for the big one first. Uh, that way if I miss, I can use it for the small one. We have approximately 63 thousandths to come off. Part of the reason I'm using this tool is I know that I can get some good clearance away from the uh, <laughs> from the dog. And let's make sure that we are still we're at the right length.
Yeah, if anything, it could probably come up this way a little bit more. One inch, one fifty-eight. I had to readjust the angle of the compound because otherwise it was interfering with the uh, tailstock. We're going to be doing the same thing on this end, except now we're shooting for 1.123 or in that neighborhood. chatter in that. Whoa, brutal. That is brutal. And they're still oversized. Okay. One inch, one twenty-six and a half. I think it's time to try out something new. significantly better than what we had. That's one inch one two four. One inch. One twenty. Still got a bit of warmth to it. It says one inch, one twenty-three and a half. I'm gonna leave that. Looks like chamfer, and I do believe our shaft is done. Well, looks like we should be able to handle this job here. Let me take my welding helmet box away. I don't see the yeah I don't see those beams across the bottom deflecting too much or anything yet. There we go. We're home. Nice. I'm happy with that. So now comes the other ring. Really? Oh, right. Okay. Let's start with that. Only takes about, only taking about three tons according to the little gauge on the top. There we are. Hooray. Oh. There we are. She's assembled. Now I can start cutting the final diameters. All right, so we're set back up again between centers, only this time. Uh, we have a uh, dead center in this end, a carbide tip dead center. I have to lubricate this tip, being a dead center. For the length of time we're going to be doing this, that should be enough. I'll just reapply every now and then.
We'll take a uh, cut off of both of them to get them at least cylindrical. Uh, I don't know what kind of run out I have with the outside diameter to the shaft. Shouldn't be much, but we'll see. That's getting a little too close for my comfort. I gotta figure out something else with the uh, tool positioning. Getting a little close for my comfort toward that headstock. Or toward the dog. Alright. 2 inch, 980. 2 inch, 984 and a half. Alright. So we're well, we're effectively cutting a taper of two thou per foot. Uh, that means that the tail stock is too close to me by two thousandths of an inch. All right. This side here was about four and a half thousandths smaller than this side. Uh, I need to move it that way about two thousandths of an inch. So to do that, Unlock it at the back here. Unlock it. Loosen off this side here, just a smidge. Then as we tighten on the back side here, it'll pull the tailstock that way. There, we'll call that two. Let's snug. Snug the lock. All right, so let's give this a try. At two inch, nine forty eight. Two inch, nine forty-eight, four tenths. I'll give it that. Need to be able to see the vernier scale. Two inch, nine forty-eight, two tenths. Okay. Well, I'm within two tenths over a foot. I think that's about as accurate as I'm going to be able to get with this thing. Um, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty tickled with that. All I'm going to do now is chamfer the edges of the indicating rings, uh, pop it out, clean it up, and uh, this is going in my toolbox. Yep, I'm satisfied with that. All right. Have to clean the grease out and we're good. Not really a rocket science type project, but uh, everybody needs one and I don't know about you, but I'm too cheap to buy one. Uh, now I can get started on another couple projects that I want to do um, where I needed to know that the tailstock was aligned properly. So thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you for the likes. Thanks for the su subscribing. Um, thanks for watching. It's just, it's really cool to be part of this community. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see y'all next time.